We're back in our Unreal VR project using the VR template in Unreal. And in this lesson, we're going to look at materials and be placing materials on a few different objects. All right, here's our giant sphere. And I remember just now that if you hold down the scroll wheel on the mouse, you can pan left and right and move up and down. But this seems to be inverted from how I like it. So I'm going to have to find that setting and I'll show you later how to change that. All right, now let's find a material to put on here. We'll start by looking for one that came with this demo scene in starter content. I'm going to expand this content window. All right, here we go. And when you're looking at materials, I would recommend that you have these icons here and as large as you need them to be so you can see the detail. All right, this is pretty good, but maybe a little too zoomed in. Medium size looks good. Let's try this material. It's nice that the icons are spheres, so we can see exactly what it's going to look like on our sphere. All right, this one is burnished steel. That looks great. It's a metal, but kind of dinged up a bit. It has a lot of detail in it. Now you can see I'm clicked on the sphere object and in the details panel, we could also change the material. If you don't have the details panel, go up here to the windows drop down and you can pick any of them. I mean, I guess they're called windows, not panels, but uh, the content browser, the details, window, all that stuff. You, If you don't see it on your screen, you can get it from there. So I'm clicked on the sphere object and here in the details panel, I can see its position, its rotation and scale. And also I guess the base mesh here and below that is the material and the materials drop down will automatically populate with all the possible materials in your project. So you could just pick one from there if you want to Let's see. We can see more details about this material if we want to by double clicking on it, either from here or in the content window. Uh, it opened on my other monitor. And here is the material graph. Now this is more technical than we're getting into because we're just using pre-made materials. Now I do know how to make a material from scratch, but it takes a while. It's not that easy if you're new to it. I changed my Unreal Editor display to the default settings. And so now that panel on the left side is gone. I think I like it better this way. Um, so maybe in the previous video, our displays were not matched up. I apologize for that. And now the content drawer here is going to vanish when I click up here. I think that is the default. And then you can just click to bring it back again. Very convenient. And then the middle mouse button, like I said, was inverted for panning. If you go into editor preferences, 
into level editor and then viewport, you are going to find all these navigation control settings for how you move around in the viewport. If you want to invert anything, you can do it here. If you want to dock any of these windows, just grab it and pull it and then drop it where you want to dock it. And then you can move between these two tabs. But actually, I don't want this docked right now, so I'll just close that. Actually, do I like when that content drawer disappears? I don't know. Maybe I'm just going to click to dock it. That's what I'm used to. Okay, I had removed the material from the sphere as well, so I'm going to drag it back on there again. And I hooked up my VR goggles. And I don't think I want to start that close to the sphere. It's a little bit scary. Maybe I can start further away from it. I can select the player start in the viewport or find player start in the outliner list over here. Actually, I'm just going to add one more panel. World settings. We don't need this right now, but as I recall, I do occasionally, <laughs> occasionally use it. Now we're on this translate objects tool, which means to move it. And you can just drag it by those arrows. And then I'm just holding down the right mouse button and using WASD to move around in the viewport. I think maybe starting in here will be preferable for me. Like I said, this light blue arrow is the direction you'll be facing when you start. So I'm going to spin that around to be facing the opening but I won't have to see the sphere right away. All right, let's float on over here. I hope this isn't making you nauseous. Maybe I can move one of these guns as well. <laughs> so I have that in inside the building. I am actually going to leave it up in the air like that. The gun should fall down. I think it has physics set on it and it'll just drop to the ground when the game starts. Let's find out. Yes, the gun is on the ground. I'm just trying to figure out the finger movements. All right, time to view the metallic sphere, giant alien sphere. Looks really good. The light reflecting off it and the environment reflecting in it, really nice. All right, I got a little bit brave and approached it. It looked good. The texture was a bit blurry, though, because of the scale, I think. That can be adjusted. All these materials can be scaled differently. We'll get into that a bit shortly. Let's apply that same material to some other objects in our scene, maybe some smaller objects, to see what that looks like. Maybe this ball looks really good. 
What else? How about this? Okay, that didn't work. We can't just drop the material. These cubes are a little more complex. Uh, so I think we're gonna have to go in here. We'll get into this later, but we can change the material. It's just not quite as simple as dragging and dropping into the viewport. But see, that was fairly simple. What else? Let's drag one of these cubes, maybe um, away from the giant sphere, but into the light. And we can examine the burnished steel in the sunlight on a cube. I did change a few other things too. I'm starting in this corner now instead of inside the building. Okay, here's our first cube. Of course, this looks a lot better in VR than it does on a flat screen, but you can see how the light plays off the material very realistically. Let's check out the one in the sun. It looks kind of dark, but this looks really good up close. Wow, look at that. The reflections. I have noticed that with metal, it can look quite dark, but that's the nature of metal, I guess. It's either very bright or very dark. That looks fantastic. Let's see, can I throw this at the evil sphere and save the world? <laughs> no, not at all. I have no idea why that went flying off to the side. That is a beach ball. It has a weird weight to it. Also, it is tricky to throw things in VR until you get used to it. It was the same with the Wii, <laughs> the Nintendo Wii back in the day. It it took a while to figure out how to release the bowling ball, or I don't know if you remember all that from back in the day. Anyway, practice makes perfect, right? These provided materials are not the most user friendly, and you'll see why in a minute. Let's double, cl double click into the grass. And you can see this is also quite complex with the nodes. Really not too bad though. These things can get crazy. And you'll notice this output on all the materials. This is where a uh, base color is set, uh, how metallic something is, how rough or like how shiny or rough the object is. Emissive means how like a glow the material could glow a bit. So yeah, all uh, material graphs will have that output node and all kinds of things can be plugged into it. I mean, we saw this a bit before in the other material now, but look at this one in the parameters tab, we have something. The other ones were empty, but if you set some of your nodes as variables, I believe, then you can more easily change some aspects of the material. Like here, you can change the color. And this material is actually comprised of two different parts or many parts, but you could change, uh, I think one was called the dead grass area. So there's like two, two different colors you can change here if you want some really crazy looking grass and these parameters could be anything. It could be the tiling or it doesn't just have to be color. You could set almost anything to be a variable.
And don't forget, if you want to save a change to your material, you have to do it in that tab. You'll see a little asterisk there, which means it's not saved. And you can have multiple tabs open and some can be saved and some not. So make sure you save your tab if you want to do that. I don't want to save anything here. All right, here I was just trying to undo and I think I undid too much. If you do control Z, it doesn't just stick to that tab that you're in. So it actually undid some stuff here. I'll just set it back. You can do control Y obviously to restore. All right, let's try making this giant sphere look like grass. <laughs> That's fairly hideous looking and not really to scale either. I don't think I want to look at that in VR with that grass material. What if we put it on something else, make something else look like grass? on here. Oh, that looks hideous as well. Maybe grass should just stick to the ground. <laughs> and you can see that is not the correct scale. And that would be tiling to fix that. And like I said, these are not user friendly, user friendly materials. Usually uh, you want to have parameters so that the tiling can more easily be changed. And we will look at some of those textures pretty soon. Here's, I'm just goofing around. This is one of my favorite things to do is just slop different materials onto something and see what it looks like. I mean, this is pretty amazing. Not to scale, obviously, these are giant rocks. It could work for like an alien object though, right? But again, the fake bumpiness of these materials will not show up in VR. So if you see a bumpy looking rock here, which in a regular game would look bumpy in VR is going to look very smooth look like very fake rocks. In a minute, I will show you how to get some more user-friendly materials, but I just love looking at different materials. So I'm going to go through some more of these VR template sample scene materials just for fun. And you can see what some different materials might look like. And of course, like I said, these are not proper scale. That's probably meant for a flat wall. And so some of, some of these might look weird on a sphere. That's quite nice. That gold. This is copper. That might be okay. Now, let's say you have megalophobia and you don't want to see this giant sphere in your viewport. Click this eyeball in the outliner next to your object and it will disappear. Though it is still there. You can see the shadow, maybe because that's from baked lighting, but it's there. You just can't see it right now. And I'm going to leave it that way. 
All right, now we're going to get a different material from Quixel Bridge. I'm just now this is going away soon. You can see they have a notification there that all this Quixel Bridge stuff is going to be on a site called Fab soon. And we'll talk about that in a different video. But now is a great time to get some of these assets. They're going to be free until the end of 2024, and then you're going to have to pay for them. So I'm not going to bother showing you this Quixel bridge since it's going to be gone in a few weeks. Um, these are some of the materials I had downloaded previously, like this brick. I think that might be nice to bring into our project. Yeah. So I think in the future, you're going to have to pay for these materials and props, but I will talk about that later. I'll take medium quality here. That should be good enough for our purposes. Remember that a very detailed, a high resolution material is going to take up memory in your project and maybe be difficult to render in the game. So you're going to have to test that out. So I'm just going to add this to my project now. Like I said, by the time anyone ever sees this video, it, uh, that Quixel bridge will be gone. And here is the brick material now in my project. And this should be the same in the future if you get it from fab or wherever. And let's put it on the wall here. Okay, you can see the proportion is completely wrong. And that's called tiling, which we'll fix. Like a tile could be big or small. I'm just going to put it, whoa, look at that. That's not the right proportion at all. There's like one brick going across the entire wall. All right, double clicked into the material. And these you can see have parameters. Okay, so you can easily change settings without going into that cuckoo graph with the different nodes. So here we have tiling and offset, and I'm going to extend the drop down. And here I can just change the X and Y tiling and you can see the, the size changing. We want to shrink those bricks. And don't forget to save if you want to do that. Much better, but still not correct. Those bricks are a bit wide. I think, okay, you know what we're going to do? First of all, we're going to fix the lighting because our brick wall is in the shadows right now. And I want to see the material a little bit better. I'm going to select my directional light, which again could be done in the viewport or in the outliner. And I'm going to click on rotate and I am, you can see a little arrow there. That's the direction of your light. I'm going to just rotate it this way. And now our brick wall is illuminated and we can see more detail when we go into VR. Why not bring back our sphere? Is that going to mess up the lighting? I don't know. It looks okay still. All right. Bye bye. You know what? I don't want to see that right now. All right, let's undock this window and just have it floating out here because I just remembered how you're supposed to do this. We'll make it much easier is to just adjust the tiling while you can see your wall. You don't have to guess then. Okay. Now that's getting too thin. 
These are weird bricks, though. Some of them are wider than other ones. Is it like some are one direction and one the and some the other direction? That looks better. And don't forget to save it. Save your material. This probably looks textured on the screen. In VR, the bricks look pretty flat, though. And we're going to fix that in the future. But I will tell you that, yeah, in VR, you're not going to see the bumpiness that you do on a flat screen. So if you made a first person or third person game, all these materials would look fabulous. But once you get into VR, they're just because of the way the optics are in your eyes through the goggles, it doesn't show bumpiness in there. It's going to look like brick wallpaper. And you can see on that cube there that I uh, I'm not looking at right now. The bricks are really tiny. And that's because we applied the same brick material to two different sized objects. All right, well, and I'm just looking at this metal cube now, I guess. Now, what you would do is you can make an instance of that brick material. And an instance, you could change the tiling size, and then you could drop that other version onto a different object and the proportion would be fixed then. We'll get into that in a different video. We're just messing around right now getting introduced to materials. All right, I did say we would check what that medium setting was and it looks like it's um it's 2k is what it is. I think the high res is 4k. All right. Well, 2k is fine for our purposes. And then this purple thing here, that's a normal map is what it's called. And that contains information about the bumpiness, the depth of different parts of the material. And, uh, yeah, that it doesn't render very well in VR though. But for regular games, that's very important. I just went a little crazy here and changed a lot of the materials. Just for fun, we've got all kinds of zany things happening. Oops, I just ran into the wall. I changed the lighting too, so it comes straight down. And actually, in VR, some of the materials looked pretty good. Like that wood did seem to have a texture. This wallpaper did seem to have a bit of texture. And that giant sphere with the rocks was very 3D looking. I have to investigate exactly what the difference is. Though the brick did look flat. But yeah, this wallpaper is lovely. And these were very 3D. The rocks, maybe too 3D. It actually, like the stereo view of the goggles couldn't focus that well on some of it. That was the tech panel material I had put. It's quite fascinating in VR, the reflections. And yeah, just everything looked good. I think some of the emissive materials that glow are causing aliasing or jagged edges. Um, so I'm going to have to look into smoothing that out. This just looks so good, that metallic sphere. The grass is a, a little freaky. <laughs> But I know how to make a good grass texture. 
for the ground. I'll show that in another video. And I guess I'll just say goodbye for now. See you in the next video where we'll do some fun, wonderful things. Who knows what?